What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Snowballer here and today I am going to be ranking what is probably the most controversial position to rank and that is the power forwards. And the reason it is so controversial is because there are so many different types of power forwards in the NBA. Obviously for every position you're going to have the guys who do different things but in the power forward position it's a lot of guys who could play the 3, the 4, the 5, you know, just shooters, defenders, rebounders, just guys that do all sorts of different things so it's so hard to rank these guys and that's what makes this one probably the most controversial ranking I'm going to have so starting off right away we have Tobias Harris of course the 76ers are the first team alphabetically hang on I gotta fix this um the side thing here all right I got the tiers fixed and Tobias Harris I'm really high on Tobias Harris I think he's a really good player um averages like 20 points on a team with two really good players on it I want to say he's probably top 10, but it's going to be tough for him to be. Um, there are a lot of good power forwards in the league, and I think he's one of them. I'll put him in, in 6 through 10 right now. Next up, we have Giannis, um, two-time MVP, defensive player of the year candidate like every year. Um, he He's going to be a top five for sure. Now we got Patrick Williams. I'm going to put him in 26 through 30 now. Um, a good defender. He played above expectations offensively, which isn't saying much. Nobody really expected anything from him offensively, but he was really solid offensively. Um, he definitely has a chance to move up this list the more I do it, and especially at the end of the year, I could see him up here at 16 through 20, at least 21 through 25, but we'll put him at 26 through 30 now. Next, we have Evan Mobley. I think Mobley's going to have a really good rookie year, probably third or fourth in rookie of the year votings. I think he's the type of guy who probably can't really win it but who's going to be solid no matter what so i i'm happy to see what he can do his rookie year i'm going to put him at 26 to 30 as well they're saying he's going to start over laurie marketing which i'm fine with i guess jason tatum is an odd one um a guy who should probably play the three wants to be the one wants to be the point guard but he's obviously not built for that the way he plays it's hard to win with his play style but he's such a good player that the celtics might find a way to do it he is one of the best shooters in the league. Um, really good shooter. Not terribly, not terrible defensively either. He's probably above average, but not against big guys. There are a lot of power forwards here that can guard big guys. Jason Tatum's not one of them. Next up, we have Marcus Morris Sr. I don't really like Marcus Morris Sr. for a lot of reasons. Um, but I do have to admit, he's one of the best corner three-point shooters in the league. Which is just an odd stat to have, but it's it's true. And he is very good from that area of the floor. He's also a pretty good defender. I think his defense is a little overrated. He's a solid power forward, I have to admit that. Next up, we have Jaron Jackson Jr. And that's a tough one to rank for me because he's been injured a lot. I'll probably just put him 11 through 15 now. I think he's probably on the back end of that right now, but... He's, he's a really good defender. Um, offensively, he's solid. He's not a scorer by any means, but he plays his role. He can play in the pick and roll. He can play in the pick and pop. He can hit a three or two game. Next up, we have John Collins. I believe John Collins is a better player right now than Jaron Jackson Jr. Um, the issue with Collins was always his defense. Is he ever going to be a good enough defender to help his team? And in the playoffs last year, he wasn't a good defender by any means, but he was solid. He held his ground, held his own, and that was enough for the Hawks to make it to the conference finals. Next up, we have NBA champion P.J. Tucker. His offense is a big question mark for me. I believe he is right now. He is better than Patrick Williams um, because he is a better defender, but offensively, Patrick Williams is right on his level probably even better so we'll put him there for now i think after this year he'll probably be behind both these guys maybe not evan mobley but at least patrick williams and it could be evan mobley too i could see mobley being up here after this year um i could see him being anywhere from here probably i don't expect him to be too high because he's playing for the Cavs. but then again he is a very very talented player next up we have pj washington i'm a fan of pj washington i want to say he's Close to the level of Jaron Jackson Jr., but I don't know if he is. I'll put him behind Jaron Jackson Jr. for now. Um, maybe I'll put him in 16 through 20 for now. 
that's fine, I think. All right, next up we have Royce O'Neal, really good defender offensively. He's not terrible, but I just don't know if he's good enough to propel him up to like PJ Tucker or PJ Washington type of area. I'll put him ahead of Marcus Morris Sr. Um, that's I'm fine with that. I think Royce O'Neal is a guy who's guarding your best player literally all game, and offensively he's not terrible either. So I'm fine with putting him right there for now next up we have Marvin Bagley who at this point he's looking like a potential bust but that's only because he was the second overall pick he makes some bonehead plays but he's still a talented basketball player and I think he's right on the level of PJ Washington I'm gonna put him right behind Washington for now next up we have Julius Randle um to be honest I don't get the hype around Julius Randle so much. Um, obviously, he was the best player on the Knicks last year, and the Knicks did end up being the four seed, did end up getting tossed in the first round, despite having one of the best defenses in the league, despite having Julius Randle, who didn't play well in the playoffs, despite having R.J. Barrett, despite having Derrick Rose, despite having all these pieces. Nerlens Noel, that team was really good. Um, I don't expect Julius Randle to keep up the production that he had last year. I expect it to drop a little bit, which is fine because his production last year was really, really good. I just don't expect it from him again. Next up, we have Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis is probably the second best, I don't want to say pure power forward, but true power forward. Um, him versus Jason Tatum in a couple of years is one is a thing that we can have a talk about, but right now, Anthony Davis is still a better player than Jason Tatum, despite having a down year last year. Next up, we have Jonathan Isaac. Now, Isaac is one of the best defensive forwards in the league. The problem is he's never healthy. Um, he's kind of like Jaron Jackson Jr. in that sense, but he's not as good offensively. I want to put him right around P.J. Washington. Do I think he's better than P.J. Washington? I don't know. The injury is a big question mark. Let's put him behind P.J. for now, just because of the injury. Dorian Finney Smith is a prototypical 3 and B 3 and B what 3 and D power forward. Um he's probably the best fit next to Luka Doncic on that team. Nobody else on the team really compliments Luka like Dorian Finney Smith does. I think he's kind of a guy who can play with a lot of different players and for that reason that bumps his grade up a little bit. I still think he's probably behind Marvin Bagley. Um yeah. I'll put him in the 21 through 25 for now. Next up, we have Kevin Durant. Durant belongs in the top five. Um, I think of him more as a small forward, but if he is playing that fourth position, if you want to say that, I still don't think it's a power forward. I don't think the Nets are playing a power forward unless Blake Griffin's in the game and then they're not playing a center. But he's starting at the four. He's the best player here. Best power forward? No. If we were ranking this based off of how people are as power forwards, he would go back here. Julius Randle would jump, Jason Tatum, uh, John Collins would probably move up, but we're not basing it off of how they play as power forwards, we're basing it off of the players that start at the position. That's really all there is. The skill set doesn't matter how you play, it's just how good you are. Next up, we have Aaron Gordon of the Denver Nuggets. Gordon is a player that will give you defense and offense one of the most athletic freak of natures in the nba and i just don't think he's on the level of john collins um he's pretty close to jaron jackson jr i'd say i'll put him right behind jaron jackson jr for now i think jackson's a better defender for sure offensively they're pretty close you know aaron gordon doesn't have the opportunity to really show himself offensively Jaron Jackson Jr. is just not the type of guy who should be a high volume guy. So, for that reason, I think that Jaron Jackson Jr. will stay ahead of Aaron Gordon if healthy. Demontis Sabonis is probably a top five power forward in the league, but at the same time, looking at this list of top five, I don't think he cracks it. Um, he's probably actually not top five because I think there is somebody else on this list that's going to be placed in front of him. But he is one of the best passing bigs in the league among guys like Nikola Jokic, Mason Plumlee, uh, Carl Anthony Towns, Bam Adebayo. So he he deserves his praise. 
Next up we have Zion Williamson. Zion is offensively one of the best bigs in the league. But defensively, he is nowhere near that. Um, he needs to work on the defensive side of things. And for now, I'm going to put him behind DeMontis Sabonis. Jeremy Grant is a high volume player right now. I don't think he is a an amazing player. I don't think he should be a number one option. I think he should be a three, probably your third option. But with the Pistons roster right now, he is not that. He is the number one option. And I'm going to put him right behind Jaron Jackson Jr. I think maybe in front because of the injury. I think injuries are always a big question for me. Um, obviously, when players come back from injury, usually they're nearly the same player. But I just... He's been injured so much. He played 11 games last year. And his only healthy season really was the year when the NBA got shut down in 2020. Uh, I believe he played like 60 games then. He still missed a few games. But that was like his only healthy season in the NBA. Next up we have Pascal Siakam, one of the most hated on players in the league. Um, I actually want to look at some stats from Pascal last season. Now Siakam last year... People say he had a down year. I can agree with that a little bit, but he played. He didn't play a single home game. Every game that they played was either in Tampa Bay or in the opponent's uh, arena. So they never really got to play at home, and they never had fans. And Pascal Siakam is definitely a player I think really thrives with fans. And there are certain players like that in the league. Siakam is one of them. And last year, Siakam actually, believe it or not, shot better from inside the arc than two years ago when he was, when people were comparing him to Jason Tatum prior to the bubble. Obviously, during the bubble, Siakam fell off because there weren't any fans, because they weren't playing at home, whatever you want to give your reason being. Pascal Siakam wasn't great after that, but he was playing amazing ball in the 2019-2020 season up until the NBA game shut down. Last year he was still solid. I believe he is still better than DeMontis Sabonis right now. I believe he is right on the level of Julius Randle. In my personal opinion, this is all opinion based, I believe he is going to be better than Julius Randle at the end of the season. But right now, I will put him behind Randle because Randle did play better last year. Daniel Tice is apparently the starting power forward for the Houston Rockets. In my opinion, Tice is a true center. He's only 6'8", but he plays like a center. And Christian Wood plays more like a power forward. Daniel Tice is probably going to go alongside Patrick Williams right here. I believe he is a little bit worse than P.J. Tucker right now. Um, there's not much to say about Tice. He's... He, he's alright. He, he was better, I think, with the Celtics than he was with the um, the Bulls. Next up, we have another player that was with the Bulls last year, and that is Thaddeus Young. Thaddeus Young has turned into one of the best passing big men in the league, which is weird to say, but it's true. Now, do I think Thaddeus Young is a better player than Marvin Bagley? I don't think I do. Is he better than Dwayne Finney-Smith, even? I don't know. He's really a tough player to um, gauge. I'm going to put him right in front of Dorian Finney Smith for now. Next up, we have Jay Crowder, another prototypical 3 and D guy. One of the grittiest power forwards in the league. Can guard the 2 through 5, probably. And after what I saw from him last year as that 3 and D guy, he really held down that defense and helped the Suns' offense a lot. I'm going to put him right behind Jaron Jackson Jr. In front of Aaron Gordon. I believe that Jay Crowder is one of the most underrated power forwards in the league. Next up we have uh, Pokusevsky. Pokusevsky. Um, Poku is not a guy I'm super high on. Um, a lot of people consider him a 3. Despite him being like 7-1. Uh, he is so lengthy. Not strong enough to guard any 4s in the league. So it's going to be really tough to rank him, but right now I see him right behind Patrick Williams. Uh, that's fine. Torian Prince is not going to be the starting power forward for the Minnesota Timberwolves. I can tell you that much for sure. And depending on what the Timberwolves end up running, 
it's probably going to end up being Anthony Edwards at the two instead of Malik Beasley. Even though Beasley is a starting caliber shooting guard, I think that Finch likes his fit off the bench. So he's probably going to come off the bench. Jaden McDaniels and Jared Vanderbilt are probably going to be the starters, which means Vanderbilt will be the four. So if this is Jared Vanderbilt, I am going to put him right behind P.J. Tucker. Vando's not as good defensively as Tucker and probably about the same level offensively as P.J. Tucker. So I think these two players are pretty comparable if this is Va Jared Vanderbilt. If this is Taurian Prince, he's a 3 and D guy who has the potential to be here when given the opportunity. Maybe even here. But with this being Jared Vanderbilt, I'm going to put him here. But because he brings you so much defensively, the Timberwolves need that. I think he's a better fit for the team than for the starting five, at least than Torian Prince is. Next up, we have Robert Covington. Now, Covington, a lot of people said have a had a down year last year, which is probably true. I still think he's around the Marvin Bagley area. I think he's better than Thaddeus Young. I think he might be better than Marvin Bagley, probably better than Marvin Bagley. I'll put him right there for now in the 16 through 20 range. Next up, we have Draymond Green. And I might catch some heat for saying this but I believe that Jay Crowder after this season will be considered a better power forward than Draymond Green but Green deserves his roses and is probably still a top 10 power forward in the league just for what he brings you defensively offensively he's not very good but defensively he's still a defensive player of the year caliber defender next up we have Rui Hachimura who I'm going to put right behind Marvin Bagley, um, Rui, I'm expecting a big year from him, and the Washington Wizards are going to need it if they want a chance to make it out of the play-in. So with this list, that means that there are only four guys in the 21 through 25, which means one person has to be bumped up, and P.J. Tucker is that guy. And if I wanted to be really controversial, I am very tempted to do this. Very tempted to do that. But I'm not going to because I do believe Julius Randle right now is a better player than Pascal Siakam is. I think if Siakam changes his offensive game so he has more moves than just the spin move, he will pass Julius Randle. If you guys think there are controversial ones, put them in the comments below and tell me what you would change, who you would move up and down, if you would change anything at all or if my list is perfect, which it obviously is not. But I think this is going to be my final list. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'm out.